Hello, my name is Joe, and in this course, I'm going to take you through how to create photogrammetry models for films, TV, and games. If you find this helpful, please like and subscribe and hit that bell for more videos. And don't forget to check out my website, 3dassetlibrary.com, for Unreal and Unity Engine assets. Also, if you find this helpful, please check out my Patreon below for exclusive content relating to photogrammetry, games. So in this video we're going to quickly talk about um, the turntables. So this is just a simple turntable that I've bought off of um, Amazon. I think it cost about seven dollars, something like that, seven quid, seven dollars. And um, what I did is then I, div I uh, initially, you can see down the edge here there's markings. This will all be explained um, in detail in the later uh, sections. But I basically halved it, then quartered it, then broke it down into basically uh, little sections i think it's about probably about maybe 15 degrees 10 degrees something like that obviously if you want to be precise about it you can use a compass for all that and um this basically allows me to then when i when i move the turntable around know that i'm going to get exactly the same uh, distance between each scan things like that but on this one um so this is set up for the three full 360 the scan, uh, de degree scan so this is for photo scanning the bottom of objects everything you know so that when you turn it over you're not missing say you've scanned a shoe and you're not missing the sole of the shoe this is for that then um for a normal photo scan so say you just wanted the um top of the shoe and you didn't want to see the sole, what we will do in a later video is that we will basically create a random pattern over the top of this, so it'll be like random squiggles, you know, whatever, so you literally just get a pen and create squiggles all over the top of it, so that when the software's looking at it and the turntable's turning, um, it knows that it has to line up the, the squiggles with each other in each photo that appears, so you know you get you get very very good fast results. And um, obviously, something like this you can't apply it to objects, say like a tree, you know, unless you've got a bonsai tree. Um, you know, you'd you'd move around the tree yourself. But for this, this is um, just our our basic turntable here, and we're going to go into depth more about this. Um, you can get these anywhere. I think that you can get even get cake displays. Um, I have used automated ones um but generally they're, they're more um more hassle than they're worth so yeah we'll go through all this later but i thought i'd just quickly show you um how this is going to work so what we're going to talk about next is the background of your scan now this really only applies to um full 360 degree images as in you can see underneath etc but i'm going to tell you uh, anyway um we look at this boot here so we're back to the 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 boot again and you'll see that this stands out completely from the background. There is no conflict in colors. There's no, you know, it's it's not like this has got, say, white laces, things like that. Everything in this boot does not conflict with the background. Now, in comparison, if this boot was against a back background, the majority of the boot would conflict with the background because it's a black boot. And then what would happen is when you mask your, um, your object, so we'll go here quickly. So when we mask our boots, um, what would happen is that it would look at the the background and um, then try and create a mask but because the majority of the boot is black it would also mask out the boot so what we'd probably be led, left with is just the laces um, so this also applies in reverse that if you were doing a white shoe you would want to put the white shoe against something that isn't um, a white background so what, quite often what I'll do here in this case is I would lay down something black um, in the, if I was say photographing a white shoe is I would flip my um, uh, turntable over because it's black on the other side and then I would lay down something black could be a black shirt for instance or it could be you know I have proper black uh, sheets of uh, material that go in here to, to make it completely black so then the, the white shoe is against a black background um, so obviously it works uh, for photographing differentiating, creating those masks a lot better so always bear in mind, mind look at what you're photographing against the background um, for 360 full 360 degree um, scans um, for normal scans that doesn't necessarily matter so much because um, it, it it looks at your background to find out where you are in the world and um, to construct the image but for full 360 which we'll explain later um, this is very important to remember so remember look at your image versus the background so what we're going to talk about here is image overlap so basically if you look at these images here they um, all have a large amount of overlap so if we look at the say this boot here compared to this one they're moving gradually um, so this helps to ensure that when the software is looking at it that it can create the image and the texture um, as best as possible like for instance if we went from say this boot here um, 
to this boot here. So this is the photographs we've taken. So we take this as a photograph, then we take this one as a photograph, then we take this one as a photograph. It will attempt to reconstruct it, um, but you'll find that it'll lose a lot of detail and depending on the object, it may not even construct it at all because there's not enough, you know, depending on the complexity of it, there's not enough information. Um, obviously, when we go here, um, again, this is for 360 degree images. This will all be explained. Is that you can see here I flipped over the same principle. Um, so, but if we go from say this boot and we scroll down to the bottom, I've moved the camera down um, a, a quite a bit to get more of the side view of the boot um, to get a, a more detail in the picture. Uh, in the scan, sorry, um, but you can see here same principles being applied. Um, so depending on the complexity, say something like a shoe doesn't necessarily need um, as many photos as say something that's perhaps a, a little bit more intricate in its design or bigger for instance, you know, like this one's I think it's got 205 images, probably a little bit excessive, but I wanted to, when I scanned the boot, I wanted to get it as high quality as possible. Um, this, uh, the overlap, I believe it's got to be something like 80% of the picture has to overlap with the previous picture. So, you know, you look here because it's gradually, uh, it's only gradually moved. We've still got a lot of overlap of the previous picture. Whereas if we went from that picture to that picture, there's not very much overlap. So when you're taking photos, if your scans aren't coming out, um, well, it could well be the amount of overlap you've got from your, um, your initial images. So always bear that in mind. But again, we're going to be going through this. So don't worry.